How's it going guys? My name is Graham and welcome to Riddle Transfer. The series has transcended, moved beyond the school as if that wasn't apparent from Riddle School 5. We've even done away with the old classic font. Things are different, new, exciting, interesting. The next step in the journey. This is a circle now instead of just a line at the bottom. Crazy <laughs> new changes. Back when John was still going by John Bro, he had used that moniker for like a really long time. He's been Johnachrome for probably equally as long now. Oh man, I always love this little intro sequence from Newgrounds. It's so cool. <laughs> and then the classic menu music. Gotta keep that around. All else has been kind of changed and tweaked. Gotta keep that. Gotta have mostly the, the menu being no, relatively no, no, the same. No, no, no. There's always a different quit joke. I always thought the joke was just that there was a quit button, but now I'm realizing coming back to this that there's usually an extra joke there. No, 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 no. Just John simply stating, no, no, not gonna happen. You can't quit, don't do it. Play the game, that's what you were here for. Why are you trying to fight it? This, I think, might be my favorite installment in the series. It just gets extra weird and they just commit to that Diz stereotypical alien well now that your world is saved and our sadistic leader Viz is gone from the universe what do you all plan to accomplish when you return to your life on earth Zack the human fireplace uh, personally I plan to find a cure for this fever I've developed drinking a couple thousand gallons of ice water might help a little you're just gonna tip yourself back in the direction of being cold, man. It's funny that his head is on fire and he's also finally growing hair. Oh, all these bald children and bald characters, he's, he's growing his own now. Smiley, the eager scholar. I'll continue my search for knowledge and use what I know to help others. Reading the encyclopedia might be fun. Fred, the helping hand. Our go-to, our right-hand man. I haven't really thought about what I'll do when I get back. I guess what I'll do when I get back is think of what I'll do when I get back. And Phil, the stalwart leader. With some sarcastic somethings to say as always. As for me, no time to think on that. What's going on? Why are we stopped? Something is controlling the ship. All the way from Earth. That's an impressively long range tractor beam. It's taking us off course. It's very dramatic. <laughs> Interstellar's got nothing on this. The amount of effects and things applied there caused some slight frame drops. I just zone 5.1 instead of area. 51. Like, it's just beautiful. <laughs> what are we gonna do? Just the best possible visual gag. <laughs> that joke alone is like really sells and drives home what is different and, and improved, and for some reason, Zach isn't handcuffed. That's strange, actually. But it just shows how, how the series has grown and evolved and like kind of what's different about all of it now. It's, it's uh, more mature. Well, I was hoping for a new beginning. I just didn't think it would look like this. Escaping, yet again, tends to be uh, a pretty recurring element of the Riddle series. It's like kind of X-Files-y. I really like that. IFO landing, so it's an identified flag object. I can't see the label above that door from here, therefore I don't know it exists. <laughs> Can I throw a monkey at you? From Karsh. Karsh is like a friend of John's who's come up a few times in the series, little, refer little references and like inside jokes. This looks a little bit like the No You're a Moose character, so I'm wondering if that came from Karsh, and then the monkey coming from the Riddle School 3 teacher's classroom. A poster that says, can I throw a monkey at you? Sure, as long as it means the monkey doesn't throw anything at me. No 
this turd throwing monkeys. We got our classic vent. Always making use of the vent. To be safe, I'm going to make sure I don't even touch that mirror. Seven years of bad luck wouldn't go well with my two major back-to-back -back abductions. You might already be riding out like a life sentence of bad luck, Phil. An uncomfortable pillow. It's better than a plastic bag, but maybe just as crinkly. Exquisite bedding. How considerate of the facility agents to give me such fine bedding as this paper-thin bed sheet. Oh, are you just on the rock-hard floor other than that? That sucks. Ever since the glorious invention of hand sanitizer, I've rarely used sinks. It is quick and efficient, but you're probably supposed to combo the two of them together at least a little bit. The toilet bowl. I don't think this toilet has been flushed in a while. That's not good when you're new to the room and you can just immediately tell that it, it, that's, that's not good. We don't know who's been up to their biz in there. This vent has nothing in it. Preposterous! Usually there's a roll of toilet paper or a rubber band or something. The long-term payoff and callback. A TV screen, 78255. You can see uh, the tele the television, like Viz, the alien. Although, we're in a government facility. What are they doing naming their things after aliens? I guess they're just big fans, huh? I think there's something in the toilet lid. I have the benefit of having gone through a lot of this before. Bleah. I'm gonna steal this from the can, cause I can. And then fish it around and start smacking around. Oh, I already forget what it was. I know that's not it, cause it was a five digit number. <laughs> 78255, nuts. 78255, there we go. It's hard, it's hard to reach around. I realize I'm just clicking a mouse and I have no excuse, but that was just because it was difficult for him. Subjects, please wash your hands before escaping. I've seen people wash their hands in lighter fluid and light it to get rid of the germs. I'm not trying that because I remember when Chubb tried to burn fat the same way. Didn't work. I remember when people had Axe body spray and they would spray it on their hand and light it on fire and it would just burn off like the fumes or chemicals or whatever and then you just have to quickly put it out. But then, you know, people start playing around and you light their pants on fire and you put it out a bit too slowly and put a big bird mark in your pants. Anyways, playing with fire, fun, but dangerous. I guess I shouldn't underestimate these facility agent guys, but it's easier to believe I saved Earth than it is to believe somebody spelled my name correctly. <laughs> it's, do people normally do it with, like, extra L's or, or anything like that? I can't think of other ways to spell Phil. Fancy rotating light. These these go these government guys are well funded. You can tell from that alone. I like thundering rainstorms of death, except for the thundering and storms of death part. Okay, so I, I like rain. Me too. I really love lightning, and a good thunder's okay. Lightning and rain's where it's at. But why is that sign? Why? <laughs> Why does it even exist? Let's go to the box room, perhaps. The box office? Is this another callback? Ta top to bottom. And layers. <laughs> Is that like a little flash reference of drawing and assembling the layers of this room? Nails and string. Nails and string. <laughs> what if, where do people get these decorative wallpapers? and floor tiles and things. When you get later into the series, it starts becoming more and more recurring that John draws backgrounds with weird doodles that somehow don't look like trash. Like, if I were to try to do that, it would look ugly as sin. Sticky note. I, I sound like my grandmother I say ugly as sin. A blank sticky note. I guess someone wanted to make sure they didn't forget something and forgot anyway. Empty box. Smushed box this side up, but it's wrong. Not empty box. And a bunch more empty boxes. And inside this one, it's a trick box. Uh, faked out. Oh, you flip it open and it covers the knot, so it is an empty box. Did we just have like a, a Schrodinger's box? Is that joke way more sophisticated than just like a sight gag? That's really great. I love it. What a, st what a storage room. Nothing stored at all. It's very messy. Why is everything knocked all over? Sad. This box must have boxed in a boxing match and lost. Is this, is this the champ then? 
with a what a storage room nothing stored at all most of these just say that yeah it's uh this room's pretty useless i can't even click any of the, the no oh yes you can peel them back ah but you have to make sure you do the top layer first and with that you have the elevator key there had to be something in this room i just like wasn't immediately remembering what oh I didn't expect to come to this so early, but this is a very exciting moment. As I pointed out at the end of the previous episode, which is so long, I wouldn't doubt that people didn't watch the whole thing. This entire room is John's dedication to me, which is just absurd. It, like, just chokes me up almost. He and I had just been talking here and there, on and off. I don't know, I had this goat character, and I went by Goat Man on Newgrounds. And I, I guess, I guess it was like an, an iconic thing. I didn't even do that much with it. He appeared in like two or three animations. But I guess part of why John probably leaned into this the tiniest bit further is that the one installment of that series was Goat 51, where he, the goat accidentally wanders into Area 51 and just kind of incidentally is like causing havoc while he just is like ignorantly, blissfully unaware trying to make wander his way out. I love that animation. I'm very proud of it. And because he made an Area 51 thing, I guess that made more sense. The Goat Man sign. I wonder why there's a hyphen in the name Goat Man. It makes it look like a Newgrounds username, but that would be absurd. <laughs> I wonder how many people went searching that after. I don't even remember. I think I didn't want it to look... T either it was taken, either Goatman without a hyphen was taken, or I didn't want it to look too superhero-y, but Spider-Man is hyphenated, so I have no idea. I couldn't tell you. The odd device. This thing says Creature Communicator on the side. That sounds potentially useful. Super secrets, shh, Santa hiding in South Pole, and finding out what tapioca is. This whole entire sign is something that's like a reference to that same animation. Santa doesn't hide. Santa seeks. Santa always seeks. Find out what tapioca is? Wow, the people here don't know what tapioca is? It's some, um, uh, I, I don't know either. I can tell you now that I know better what it is, like I've had it, I just still don't know what it's made out of. Smoke detector. Cigarettes should be called chokes instead of smokes. <laughs> A tube pipe thing with, I don't know, crazy alien things on it. I think that tube must be connected to another part of the building. That, or it's just a substanceless cylindrical object protruding from the ceiling. You know, sometimes when architects are, are designing buildings, they just like random protuberances, just for fun. Days since last accident... P? Impressive. Most of the days since last accident counters I see are dangling from wires on the wall. And the goat is just accident prone. No way out itself, also a reference to him trying to escape. Unsettling message. Looks like a really bad omen. I hope it's for the goat and not for me. Hey, goat guy. Ah, ha, ha. That's my official voice acting line that I'm contributing to the, the character there. If anyone wants to reinsert that, add that back in. The creature communicator. Hey, goat guy. Hello. What's up? Why is there man at the end of your name? No idea. I'm really just a goat. I was having the time of my life eating grass and strange mushrooms. A reference to Goat Trip, the first animation he was ever in. Then, I was taken away, mistaken for a mythical creature. So you were kidnapped? I hate puns. Which is like a pretty clever play on words. A baby goat is a kid. So, works on several levels. How are you today? I'm sad. Grass is my favorite thing to eat in the whole world. But this grass tastes so bland. It isn't anything like the grass I used to eat. It's enough grass to last a lifetime, sure. But what's the point if it doesn't taste like grass? You just said grass five times. It's like his main focus, it's his main, his whole thing, okay? Anyway, I really can't relate to your problem, but I'd like to help out. If it's not too personal, where do you do your, do your business? I don't do my business here in the grass. No grass deserves that. There's a great little drain in the ground that flushes itself automatically. 
Such a clever goat, knowing to do its whizzles in the hizzle. Somehow potty trained. I'd show you, but it's off screen. Yes. I love how many different ways this goat kind of like fourth wall breaks. I'd rather not see it, to be honest. I had to do some field work one time where I was walking through like some pretty marshy, marshy stuff. So you walk through kind of puddles and swamps and little ponds and things here and there. Shallow, you know, it's just all over the place. And at one point I was like, oh, this smells pretty bad. And it was described to me as a moose slough. Apparently moose have toilets. They just like to pee and poo in the same pond over and over again. And I was walking right through their toilet. And I smelled like that for so long. <laughs> Biology! What's the random pipe looking thing on the ceiling? I don't know, but occasionally soda cans and cereal boxes fall out of it. That's really random. Are the cans and boxes empty? Every time. Always disappointing. And why do you have a smoke detector? It's there so I can be spared if the grass starts burning. I don't know, if the grass starts burning, you might just want to throw yourself on there, man. On the fire. It's just not worth a, a world worth living in. I really care more about the grass than I care about myself, though. Oh, I as a person am not lacking <laughs> the self-esteem so aggressively. That's probably not a good sign, but whatever. I just don't want people reading into that and being like, I'm sorry, you're such a sad person. <laughs> Uh, do you have a brother named Billy? I hate puns. I personally quite like puns, but I guess this goat character was never meant to be me, so, you know, he can hate puns, sure. Communicate with you later. I was curious if I could click on any of the, the grass. Doesn't seem to be the case. Well, fun, fun to meet him. Is that, that's like a giant goat symbol. Do you know what? It kind of looks like this, like, demonic goat thing that I used at one point in, like, kind of a jokey animated thing. Uh, and it makes me wonder if, like, the joke is that they thought he was, like, this mythical demonic goat of some sort. F2 calendar. That looks like Luchi, the animator. Today is Zone 5.1 Guard Agent's annual day off. That was lucky. <laughs> and we're in September, like, middle of September. Great. I just did like the world's quickest scan to see if it was September 9th because that's a relevant Henry Stickman date So I was just kind of checking that out. I bet buttons like this would be useless in an adventure game <laughs> And the elevator buttons with the elevator key We are on floor two. So let's head to floor one shall we? Just start working our way down that picture of the sun is so bad, it's almost blinding. I actually think it's decent, but that would have made, wouldn't have made for a very good joke. Which is big, sun, bright, shiny, is that either Zach, she's on fire, or Smiley, because she's bright and happy. Hey, Phil. Hey, you actually have a bathroom stall? Whoa, uh, hi, Smiley. I'm guessing you want to ask about my hair? Well, yes, seeing as you didn't have any hair just yesterday. Nice attention to continuity. So, why do you have hair? It's not like there's much to do when you're stuck in a little prison cell. So, I use the can of hairspray that's over there to pass the time. I'll admit, I'm a bit nervous about what people will think of me now that I have hair. Oh yeah, even just in the ship in the opening cutscene you didn't. In my own, like, Riddle School 1 remaster remake, I gave Smiley hair because I just thought that that felt right. I kind of ruined this joke if that were remained in the continuity of the series. I'm no fashion expert, but I say it looks nice. Oh, well, thanks. You're welcome, but more importantly, we still need to get you out of this prison cell place. If you need anything from here, uh, uh, from me, I'll, I'll be here, I, I guess. Smiley Sunday. Energy drink classic. It's, it's just poo. Poo classic. Caffeine free diarrhea. No energy drink company should sell man made drinks. I. Reading that was the worst thing of all time. A fancy mirror. I think breaking a mirror like that would give you more than seven years of bad luck. That would be a mistake to reflect on, I'm sure. <laughs> 
Seize the day, go back to bed. I don't... Is that really a motivational? It's uh, questionable. The person who put that poster in this room has great taste. Air vents blow. That Had he not made that joke in all these many different games? That's impressive. I like to visualize sinks as blob-like creatures with huge mouths and droopy proboscis, which is like a, an insect thing. The can of hairspray. It can spray liquid that magically makes your hair grow quickly. I can't comprehend how people are able to invent and distribute whimsical goods like this. Yeah, why is there a single bald person on the planet? Except for like, you know, Jason Statham, maybe by choice. Indoor outhouse. Ooh. That might have been the, the grossest way you could have addressed that. Hey, Smiley, hey. Why do you have hair? How are you today? I'm thankful to be back on Earth. So, it doesn't bother you that you just got abducted by another space age corporation? Well, yeah, but I prefer to have an optimistic mindset. I'm more of a distant optimist myself. I think the light at the end of the cave is guarded by snakes. That really doesn't sound even remotely positive. No, I, I feel like that's a very terrible self-assessment. Phil has never been a very optimistic or positive person. He's quite cynical. Your prison cell looks a lot nicer than mine. How so? Well, it's brighter for one thing, and mine didn't have a fancy mirror or a bathroom stall. Cells are pretty typical in girls' rooms. Wait, really? I've been missing out. <laughs> that, that, that's just a funny joke on its own, but in the context of the series, we've never gone into the girls' washroom. Do you know what the code for the door's dial pad is? 51333. How do you know that? The agent who locked me in here mumbled the code out loud to himself as he dialed it in. Well, I'll see what I can do. Uh, let's talk more another time. I am curious if I bring up the hair thing again. Does he have something new? I got bored and curious, so I put on hairspray. I guess it would still be called hairspray. That, that phrase works either way. How did you tie it into a ponytail? That's, uh, that's a good question. It's a styled hairspray. It just comes in that way, all ready to go. You wouldn't want to go from bald to having a head of hair and having to immediately worry about, like, hair management. Nah, keep things quick and simple. 51333, is that what we... Oh... Um, yep, alright. Well, can't, can't quite pull that one off. It seemed too easy. Uh, this one doesn't keep track of what rooms you've been in, only what room you're currently in. It's like slightly different. The IFO deck, specifically for placing ships when you've identified them. Do they have a UFO deck where they store your ship at first and then the second it docks, they're like, hmm, alien, and then they move it to the IFO. <laughs> Diz is the only one who can fly this ship. I'll have to free him along with all my friends. It's funny that he gets like a cool green text name. I don't think anyone else gets a color-coded name. Not that I wouldn't free him anyway, but he does have that remote that controls the ship, as well as the ability to not crash. These things kind of make him important. <laughs> all right, I guess we'll save him. An aircraft chute? That looks like a logical exit. I'll need to gather my friends and have Diz fly us out of here. This is a massive hangar. I guess it would need to be. It would be pretty useless to build a small hangar. The big toe. I love this guy. I don't think he's a reference to anything. I think this was John's own creation. I wonder if there's a pinky toe too. <laughs> I guess I guess everyone kind of has a big toe. His big toe must just be like excessively big. I had to replace the batteries in a smoke detector once. It took four hours. Luckily, there was no fire in that time. Now I wasn't... Now I'm not sure. Like, ah, uh, the, the thing about there being a history of fires in the series, the running gag there seems to have crumbled a little, a little bit. It's kind of present. I, I'll stop hanging on to that. It might not be a real running gag. Good day, sir. Maybe. Well, then, maybe, uh, communicator? Good day? Salutations, young gentlemen. Of what subject shall we speak on this fine day? Are you fond of uh, crumpets? Alas, crumpets are but a faint memory for this old hominid. They were treasures to behold when paired with the tea leaves of what once was my forest. 
It was the day the black-garbed men captured me that I last sipped my very last spot of tea. Unjust judgment can be a depressant like no other. I guess he's supposed to be like British or something and I kind of just whiffed on that and I can't do a good accent so I'm, I'm blowing past it. How do you do? My apologies, but perhaps you could specify the nature of your inquiry? What is your mood at this particular moment? I feel lonely, as I generally do, which is a logical emotion because I am alone most of the time. I should say that I'm less lonely with you here, but you literally blend in with the scenery. What are your emotions in the grand scheme of things? Big picture. I'm concerned about the unlawful courtrooms and the government's capitalistic stance. The widening hole in the ozone layer frightens me, as well as the limited oil in the Earth's soil. This guy's been waiting for, for his entire life for someone to use a communicator so he could bust out a bit more than the occasional meep. I just noticed that the smoke detector kind of becomes its own angry face. Another, like, a callback. Newgrounds reference. Remind me to never ask you about that again. I'll be happy to oblige. It kind of seems like you're never happy, dude. I'm afraid I cannot specify. Allow me to respond in much greater detail than you were obviously looking for. I'll just say there are few joys greater than hearing nails against a chalkboard. I've always been one to answer every question asked to me, even if my reply is not relevant. <laughs> okay, that answers that then. Are you responsible for the trimming of your big toenails? Strange though it may seem, my toenails do not grow. But if you ever break one off, my feet never feel any pressing discomfort with tennis shoes on. I just clipped my toenails yesterday for essentially the same reason. It's maddening. He's so lucky. No wonder the government wants this guy. They're gonna harness his DNA and create a race of superhumans whose toenails never grow. Their plan is so clear to me, clear as day. Someone of your intellect surely has a wondrous hobby. I'm fascinated by fancy hats. It is my dream to wear a hat that boldly proclaims, I am a fancy hat. Well, fancy pants proclaim, run fast, run fancy. Super fancy pants adventures reference I adore the fact that Flash games are so committed to referencing one another. That sounds intriguing too, but I'd still much prefer a fancy hat. Well, to each their own. Get bent, monkey dude. Psh! You ain't got no power over me, punk. I do what I want to do. Okay, you, you cracked him. You really got to the heart, heart of it there. I realize that this is like an added detail that it would be above and beyond, but I do kind of wish that these characters had a little bit more emoting while they're conversing. This is already one of like the biggest, most fleshed out Flash games of all time. It doesn't doesn't need that sort of extra detail. It would just be it would just be neat. I guess instead it becomes a, a personal challenge to to read into their emotions. Might I ask what the purpose of your smoke detector is? Surely you jest. The walls are almost completely coated with wood and vegetation. Oh, I was only wondering if it had any other purposes. I do use it as a dinner plate sometimes. Well, tally ho, chim chap. I shall wish for your safety, good fellow. Which I f will never attempt an accent again in my life. Didn't do it there, but moving forward, also not. <laughs> Just not good at him, ever. I bet buttons like this would be useless in an adventure game. I was just kind of curious if they would have different dialogue on different floors. The fire, this would be Zack. Funny that he suddenly is fire. Were you like a rain sign because you're like a sad boy? That's kind of sad. Crazy that each of us essentially gets a floor to ourselves. Well, I mean, we share it with like one mythical creature or whatever, but you know, from a human perspective, we kind of get our own floor. I read a really weird poem once that had to do with puppies melting from the heat of the sun. It was called Hot Dogs. <laughs> oh, it's kind of horrifying. Why? That's very unfair. Zach Kelvin. Kelvin, like absolute zero. Zach has traveled where no man has gone before. He's been on both ends of the thermometer. Like both extremes too even. I'm kind of paranoid about legions of rats pouring out of the vents in the ceiling. 
Maybe that pile of monkey dolls got here through the vent. Which, I, I guess the monkey doll pile is like still a callback to that Riddle School 3 room. Judging from the general emptiness of this room, I'd say these monkey dolls ate everything. Although I suppose that could be like the curse of the monkey doll that was also from that game. Zack, it's really unfair, man. I'm very sorry that you were being treated this way. That seems uh, kind of like an extreme response, but I guess you're probably the most dangerous person. You genuinely don't have a smoke detector in your room. It's like the one room that doesn't, apparently, so I, I can understand them wanting to be a little bit cautious about that. Still seems unfair. Hi, Zack. Meh. How are you today? I'm a little tied up at the moment. Not a whole lot I can do. You have to burn the rope. Which I think that was a mobile game or a flash game title. I've tried that. The flames on my head just don't reach the rope. Keep trying. You're on fire. Joy. Just, I'm sure that's exactly the sort of thing he wants me hearing right now, Phil. Why are you strapped to a shower curtain pole? The guys who dis uh, put me here decided I was literally too hot for them to handle, so they like are spit roasting you on yourself. Basically, I've been rendered helpless for safety reasons. Things must be starting to heat up. Would you like any third degree burns? Please, take mine. This is another situation where I want to see John's notepad, where he was like, must write down every heat and fire related pun and utilize every single one. That sounds great, but I'm not hungry. What are some fun facts about you that I don't already know? Interesting question. My favorite color is red, I never tie my shoes, I hate playing dodgeball, pigeons freak me out, and I'm allergic to daisies. Just how allergic? Do you shake up, throw up, perk up, swell up, break up? I just sneeze. That probably seems anticlimactic, but it's apparently pretty bad now. Before I got tied to the ceiling, I sneezed once, and my whole body burst into flames. Spontaneous combustion from sneezing. The possibilities with that are endless. It pretty much starts with, he starts on fire and potentially burns things, and then also ends in that same place. It's a pretty immediate end. Do you know what the code for your cell door is? The code has five digits. They are 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, but not necessarily in that order. The first digit plus the second digit is equal to the third digit. The second digit is two times the first digit. The second digit is half the fourth, and the fifth is the sum of the first and fourth digits. Well, if you were able to map out such a ridiculous math equation, then surely you just know what the numbers are and in what order. I'm not enjoying this game, Zach. <laughs> I suppose I could actually do the math. But I'll come back to that when I have, like, a daisy. Everyone really took it upon themselves to, to help themselves. Everyone's seeking out their door codes and things all on their own. The fine lounge. That looks like a, a waste of money. Decorating with uh, cool Christmas lights? You're not a fan? The holiday season isn't for another three months. He's, fi he's fine with that. He just doesn't like this. Chlorophyll, the thing that costs, like, $200 per cup. That's the, that's the real kicker. That's the, the real waste of money if you ask me. Chlorophyll is actually liquefied grass and it never expires. I tried one once when I had $200 for a soda machine and it tasted exactly like grass. You actually did try it at one point? That's kind of amazing. And wonderful that they tied that back in. Wonderful callback to I think Riddle School 2, maybe 3, and the fact that now it actually has a use rather than just like a, a random joke. <laughs> it's pretty aggressive. Guess we need a cup. Pin the tail on the dodecahedron. <laughs> Which I guess just instead of donkey, they both start with dough, but otherwise it doesn't make a lot of sense. From the creators of the Spherical Stone Dartboard, ranked number one party item of the year. It doesn't sound like a great party item. It's an analog clock that shows what time it is in all of the time zones. Considering it has 12 identical hour hands, I don't see how it's useful. All 12 of them would just be moving together too. That's pretty damn funny actually. Ooh, glass tabletop, fancy, what a fine lounge. This refrigerator has a rubber chicken and six squeaky toy mice inside of it. I don't want any of that. 
I saw someone get their hand stuck in a toaster once. Then I saw 10 fire engines and a police car. Yeah, that sounds horrible. Choco logs. They float in the bowl. Oh, that's so gross. I hate it so much. One of the best things about not having hair is that I'm never going to get a bowl cut. You don't want a bowl cut? It seems like potentially desirable. I really thought I could take a bowl and use it on the chlorophyll. Um, moving out of order. The flying big pig has come back. I've never seen a pig with wings until today. Maybe I just haven't been paying much attention. <laughs> Hardwood board. It's a door with no handles, hinges, or anything else you'd normally find on a door. It also doesn't open, and there's no way to unlock it. Maybe it's not a door. <laughs> Funny that the only room to get soft padding is also the only room where this guy's not on the floor at all. They put a cage on top of the padding. What a kick in the teeth that is. Hey, pig. Snoink? I don't know what a snoink is more than an oink. <laughs> it's hard to, hard to add an S sound. Hey. Oh, hello. What's shaking bacon? I feel like that would be kind of rude to say to a pig, maybe. R triggering, triggering language. Right now, I'm as free as a bird in a bird cage. That is such a funny callback to the first riddle school. That's like one of the first things Phil says when he talks about being trapped in the school. And it's like barely a joke at the time. And then somehow he paid it off five games later. And now it's, it's suddenly much funnier. Pig, I think you and I would probably make really good friends. That's so damn good and attentive. It, and, oh, I love it. Can you really fly? I'm not an expert, but I, I can fly. Just a guess, you run into a lot of things? <laughs> That's the Riddle School 3 credit sequence. It really ruffles my feathers, yes. I guess the hog wild is as reckless as it sounds. Where did you used to live? There's a cloud in the sky that never moves. Atop that inactive cloud is the majestic kingdom of Porktop, home to all the world's flying pigs. I really wish we got to visit Porktop at some point. Oh, so that's where you live? Actually, no, I, I live in a house next to it. I've been here for about two hours. I'd like to make sure I didn't leave the stove on. <laughs> Don't you think you could squeeze through those bars? I've tried. And? I'm too fat. Oh. Well, kind of seems like you could just tuck, tuck it in a little bit, squeeze, pinch. Like, we could probably crawl into there and help push you out from the other side. Some that say pork is the... I think that's just supposed to be some say that pork is the meat of kings. Hogwash. <laughs> I guess you wouldn't want to admit it, would you? You don't want to be a salesman for your own meat. Communicate with you later. So, we visited each of the floors. Now we need the basements. Which, we still have a Fred down here. Is that a sunrise or a sunset? Never too good at figuring these things out. When someone asks me if a glass is half full or, or half empty, I just push the glass over. And he says he's near optimistic. Not, not at all. Phil! Fred! It's great to see you got out of, uh, wherever you were. I haven't had the same luck with finding a way out of this dump. Dump is right. You really got the shaft with this room. I mean, it already sucks to be locked up in, like, a secret facility dungeon cell, but you got the basement dungeon cell? Yeah, it's damp, it's it's crackled, it's the crappy bedding it looks rough. It's graffitied. Dump is right. Yeah, I, I really think the people who put us in here just took a bathroom and added an extra wall. Anyway, I'd really love to get out of here, but I, I can't do that by myself. Oh, this would the dividing wall would be the extra wall. So I'll get you out. We could make it a team effort. Yep, since there's a lot I can do behind a wall of extremely dense glass. Oh, well, it can't be that dense. We can hear each other, okay? So it'll be more like what children's television shows consider a team effort. Sounds like a party to me. This, I think this is the first time we get last names for all these characters is a, across this game, and I really love the commitment to making their names tied in some way 
to like their defining character trait across the, the first five games. Whistler makes sense that he always has a whistle. Zach Kelvin with the temperature thing. Smiley Sunday just sounds nice, really. Whistles make great sleeping pills. I mean, I think you would choke permanent sleep if that's what you're going for. Try our deluxe poster glue. <laughs> it's all peeling off. Advertising fail. And uh, you're to completely missing a dial pad, but there's not. I wonder where it could be. Maybe we can yank one from another one of the cells? A urinal, a degrading system of publicly relieving oneself that has no reason to exist. It is kind of weird. Any urinal that doesn't have a divider between them, it's just kind of weird. It's just no reason for people to have all their private bits out within like inches of one another. It's, it's a little bit exposed, you know? Mirrors are used for many different purposes. I find the most practical use to be making faces. Just gotta practice, see all the different possi possibilities there. Sank and sunk are two of the dumbest past tense verbs to appear in the English language. I'd like to have a word with whoever made those words. It sank and it sunk. It's just the same word, aren't they? Maybe there's some contextual differences, but it seems the same to me. It's always a silly moment when you discover one part of a room is colder than the rest and you realize, and you don't realize you're standing under an air vent. I'm never comfortable in bed until I have to get up. And I was in a mattress store once and they were selling pillows filled with porcupine quills. I think maybe you should shop around a little. It should not be your first and only choice. It looks like a room next to this is a, with a card reader, it's locked. No need to reread it, but I, I really botched it there. Noisy smoke detectors are good reasons not to smoke. The negotiable snowman. <laughs> Why does his sign look so basic? I feel like the across goat man, big toe, and negotiable snowman, the signs have become increasingly less detailed and less sign-like and more just like box text. The Yeti sign. With the Yeti, Y-E-D-D-Y. -D -D -Y. I've been able to negotiate with a good many snowmen in my time. I give a snowman the honor of existing. It gives me back a smile. Now that I think about it, it's a really lopsided deal. <laughs> it seems like you're doing all the work, huh? The Yeti. Hi there. <laughs> I just want to see what their different like sounds are before you communicate with them. Hi there. Hello. What kind of creature are you? My friends call me Yeti. Also, I have no friends. Will you be my friend? I think we need to negotiate it. It's, it's, it's on the table, but I, I need a little give and take here. I think friends come naturally. I, I don't just make friends with anyone who asks. Be my friend! Oh, okay, okay then. How are you today? I burn with the fury of 500 million suns! Do you want to talk about it? Oh, actually, no, I'm, I'm perfectly content. Can't, can't complain. You're polar and bipolar? <laughs> uh, it looks like you don't have a whole lot of hair. I'm very sensitive about my bareness. Well, there's nothing to be ashamed of. I, I, I don't have any hair myself. Not a single strand, okay? Well, that, that's a nice thing to say, but, but I don't need comfort. What I need is hair. Sorry, I just, I just don't have many fond memories of when my hair was shaved off. I, I pay you. I, I, I die that I found in a board game box if you get my hair back. Interesting trade. Which board game? It's called Learning to Shave. Terrible game. Wait, so you shaved your own hair off and you have a, such a terrible <laughs> memory of it? Well, obviously we need to go get the hairspray. I just gotta figure out a way to get into that room. What's the smoke detector for? It's so that hotheads won't come in and melt all the ice. I hate hotheads! That's some first-class hypocrisy right there. <laughs> I don't know if I need to bring Zack here. I feel like I could use him to burn the door that the flying pig is in. I don't think I need to melt anything down here. You've got an ice place here. Or maybe it should be more like Arnold Schwarzenegger's Mr. Freeze. You've got an ice place here. <laughs> Was that a pun? Yes. Okay, I was I was like, what, what's he's gonna rage, f fear, happiness? What was it? Was just it was just like 
just straight sadness? <laughs> or was it the majesty? Was he blown away by the wonder of it? Communicate with you later. Well, I got a lot of options, a lot of different things, and a lot of, like, pretty discernible, logical paths. I'm just clearly still missing what I need. There? Eh, I, I there? I don't know what kind of crazy person's leaving these tallies down here. Seems a tiny bit psychotic. Oh, this is where, where Diz will be. A manhole is a great word to shout as a meaningless insult. You're, you're a manhole? I do quite like that. This bubble sign thing reminds me of how much I love being stuck in the middle of nowhere. Stars aren't really dots. They're gigantic gyrostatic gaseous galactic gravity globes. That's an impressive bit of uh, alliteration there, Phil. I'm, I'm impressed. <laughs> oh, wait. Diz would probably be in the mythical creature thing. Sorry to intrude. Sorry, you're an intruder. If only I was connected to an alarm system, I could end you right now. I don't mean to spread trouble, I'm actually trying to get out of it. Do you mind keeping your mouth open so I can enter the room you're guarding? Nah, my teeth could turn you into coleslaw before you could get through me. I'm not the only one who would like to come in, though. I, I plan to bring all my friends here, too. Your three human friends? The ones that are trapped? I'd like to see them even get here. That would be a huge laugh. Actually, I'd get majorly ticked off if that happened. Don't get any bright ideas. Too late. Can give you a big old chuckle and they'll climb straight through your laughing maw. Oh, it's not even Diz. I forgot about Messy. Messy the monster. Why, why do I even want this? I don't even know. And the mock mess monster. There you go. You you have a bit more of an actual sign. And somehow they gave you like a globed terrarium bubble dome thing going on here. But you're also in the very, very basement, so we know that none of that's totally artificial. It's a messy sign. How ironic that it's actually quite clean. <sighs> I hope I don't have to talk to the guard much more often. It, it, takes, a, it takes a toll on the voice. Good day. Arf! Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> I could it seems he's very grumpy, just like tiny little arf seemed wrong. Good day. What do you want? I, I, what, 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 what other voice can I do? What else do I have? Can I just do a generic accent that's like kind of some things, but not really anything? What do you want? <laughs> what was that? Was that Irish? Kind of a little bit? I give up on that immediately. So do you go by messy? That's what everybody in this stupid landfill calls me. It's extra frustrating because I can't tell if they're saying my name or calling me a messy animal. Yeah, I guess it could go either way with you. Sheesh, you're almost as bad as they are. Wow, those water effects actually look fantastic. <laughs> Just kind of caught me off guard how good that looks. How are you today? I pretty much feel like eating my whole body starting with my head. Does that mean you're angry or you're hungry? I'm homesick and I'm sick of my home. This place is a freaking toilet hole for crying out loud. That's not even a metaphor. I sometimes get taken out of it so the agents can flush the water. Ugh. I hope that the goat's drain and the other monster's drains aren't going here. That's very unsanitary and quite cruel. How can you blame them? It's messy water. Bald-headed nuisance, kid. And how are you? Nope, 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 nope. I already did that. How old are you? I turned 66 billion 145,932 today. Well, oh, happy birthday. It's a, it's a lot. Oh, but my birthdays bite. Nobody ever celebrates them. On my birthday nine years ago, I, I was stolen and forced to live in this pathetic excuse for a lake. Well, happy birthday. <laughs> Thanks. I'll be looking forward to spending the rest of my life in this dumpy bathtub. Where did you used to live? I used to live somewhere that I could live. Mock Mess Lake. Obviously, Phil. It was a large lake. I found food on my own and observed the steady course of nature around me. Every day was interesting because of the countless tourists inspecting the area. Not to mention, I had a lot of friends in Mock Mess, both in the lake bed and out of the water. I longed, I longed to go back, but it's a lost hope. And there's no lost and found here. 
Not unless you count this puddle. I keep everything I find here before it gets flushed away. Who knows? I, I might be able to help you. What's down there? Here's some card thing that an agent dropped one time while feeding me. It says power room on it, so I would assume it opens a room with access to power. But if it's mislabeled and you get crushed into a powder or run over by a mower, don't whine to me. Right, uh, I'll keep that in mind, I, I guess. <laughs> Rumors have you've been floating around that... That's, that sentence totally threw me off because it was messy floats. Rumors have been floating around, the rumors are what's floating, that you're just a log. You know that photograph of me that's been blown out of proportion? Yeah, the black and white one? It really is just a picture of a log. Well, can I have your hat? Uh, no. My hat is my entire personality. It's the only comfort I have, not to mention, it covers my bald spot. <laughs> In a world where most characters are bald, it's very funny how sensitive most characters are about being bald. Communicate with you later. Beat it, bowling ball brain. Oh, I, I dislike the insult, but I love the alliteration. Uh, I don't remember which room necessarily had the key card. Yes? Great. Ooh, look at that. Y U G L uh, O. Well, you you ugly. <laughs> Crap. Bouncing lines. Those are the worst ones. I just can't sit still waiting in a bouncing line. <laughs> if you look at the word sphere for too long, you start wondering if it's spelled correctly. Oh, you could do that with loads of words. I'm pretty sure that this little game on the screen here is a callback to the game that the principal or the counselor is playing in either Riddle School 2 or 3. I think it's 3, which is pretty amazing. It looks a little bit bit trip runnery. I would play that if there was a game controller in this room. However, sadly, there is not. Actually, the lighting effects and everything in this room look fantastic. Like, the way the glow and the shadows and everything, I'm actually just taking it all in and I'm very impressed. I think that's part of why I love this game the most of the series too. Riddle School 5, obviously great, it's just kind of weird and wacky. This one, there's like a real dedication to making everything in this look really polished and good and like balancing like good, like extremely good art with that wacky aesthetic and I think this one pulled it off the best. And Riddle Transfer 2 still looks great. I love the character art and everything, but I feel like there's just that little bit extra detail here, maybe? I don't know. I think it's my favorite. It probably helps that I'm technically in the game. That might influence my opinion. Error! Press any key to do nothing, for you are screwed. I mean, would that... That wouldn't be for me. That would be for, like, a guard or something who, like, works here, right? Just telling him off at his own workstation? Messi's chamber, touch pipes to interact. This feels very Bioshocky. To mock Mess Lake, to trash shoot. Note to selves: the pipeline system will not function unless the center pipe is this one. This is because we haven't called the nearest plumber. Five 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 pipe down. We need we need to buy a phone. <laughs> oh, so I, I have to slide puzzle this all. I probably don't want to send Messi to the trash. Wait, is that it? Did I just solve it? No, not quite. Not quite. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it has to like loop around on itself uh, a little bit. So if I swish some of this around, nuts. It's already ending up where I don't want it. Slide those to the side. Seemed promising for a second there. Ah, uh, I thought I was gonna sail through the solution to this and then I would like not even have to do any cuts and it would just make it seem like I was just a slide puzzle genius. There is like a trick to slide puzzles. Like there, once you know how to do a slide puzzle, you can like always do it. But unfortunately, I don't necessarily know the trick, and I'm kind of just moving things around until they get kind of, kind of near where I want them to be. This. Damn it. <laughs> Every time I think it seems promising, 
then I see I see my my own mistake. Damn. These dumb two pieces basically just need to be swapped. Oh, I think I'm trying to go about this the wrong way. I knew this piece had to go here, but I was picturing the loop slightly differently. All right, less random clicking, more intentionally trying to get specific pieces to where they need to be. Maybe it's time to, to start actually learning what the, the trick is to these puzzles. So I need the third place slot, like here, needs to be second, and then I need to get this underneath that? Yeah, so that means I can now quickly do this. Now I think I technically don't need to touch the top row ever again. Those ones are like locked in, and now it's just a two by three slide puzzle. I need to get this to the far side here, and I need to move this guy over to there. So if you think of it, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, I now have the fourth and seventh positioned specifically. Oh crap, I think I'm supposed to have seven and then four. Seven and four. If you think of this, like if you number all of them, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, then I have one, two, and three locked in. I have the seventh piece here and the fourth piece here, which when it's a two by three slide puzzle, it just takes like a tiny bit of moving around. It's nothing crazy. Then it should just start being a matter of moving them around. So seven drops into place, four moves into place. The middle center is locked in and you can move that back up. Okay, I think I kind of like just understand slide puzzles now. A three by three slide puzzle. More than that, it would be quite tricky. But I do not have the thing that's supposed to fit in that hole. I, I don't have a flusher. Wait a second. I do. <laughs> I kind of forgot that I do. That's kind of great. An uncannily perfect fit. Yes, it is a toilet that is not a can. It is, a, or it's a flusher outside of a can, I guess. And flush that away, messy. Hope you enjoy. Oh, that was kind of a cool cut. And also some detailed animation there. Getting to the full rotation. Not the smoothest move, but hey, you're free. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I feel good about it too. Guard door power. Uh, press button to switch guard door off. Oh, but I need him to be stuck open. That looks kind of like a like Windows. Oh, like I thought it was like a Windows logo there. No, so now we can go down to the basement, the bottom floor, which I tried to be really careful to like memorize the order that certain things were in, like that that messy specifically on the bottom there. I know I started in two. I went to see the goat, so floor. No, the goat was there. Floor one was where I saw Big Toe. Floor, floor one is where I can give away the fancy hat. Does this hat fit your tastes? It is a nice hat, but only that. I find it is not fancy enough to wear. The hat needs to be fancier to tickle your fancy? Got it. What more could I add to this hat, in fact? I believe I need to go to floor three, because I need to be above the goat, at which point I can hook up. Where should I put the start of the hose? Oh, can I? Oh, it's one of the, that's like the only one that has a specific dialogue to go along with it. So you hook up the start to the chlorophyll. It seems like a good spot, but where should the spout go? Down into the tube. At which point, liquid grass straight into the, the murky, mucky bottom there. <laughs> he is elated. Seems like he's having a, a wonderful time. I'm, he doesn't even need to escape. He's like living his best life all of a sudden. It seems like that's literally everything he would he would want and need in life. There you go, guy. Nom, 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 delicious grass, green grass, oh yes. Uh, I'm gonna leave you uh, alone now. I like how you can see it splattered all over the, the wallpaper. Pluck a daisy. This is the only flower I can stop and smell without stepping on the precious grass. <laughs> the daisy might be useful, 
I should go over there and pick it. Put one foot on this green grass and uh, you'll feel the wrath of a thousand rams. Okay, okay, never mind. Oh man, the detail John put into the mouth and the chewing looks so much better than my own animation. I did it in such a lazy, terrible way. Way to really, way to really show me up on that one. It's very cute though, I love it. <laughs> oh, I knew what for the monsters were on. I talked to Zach on floor one? No, oh, that's Smiley. Floor three? <laughs> Cause I know Fred was in the basement, he was down low. So from here, I don't really know how we're gonna get the daisy to you. That daisy won't have any effect if you can't enter the section of the room. Okay, I gotta do his riddle. Okay there, Paul Dano, Jim Carrey, why, why he's throwing this at me? I'm gonna type this out in a notepad on the side. So, A plus B equals C. <laughs> okay, instantly. Now he's telling me that B is two times A. So I'm gonna write that down. But I'm already starting to think that it's just one, two, three, four, five. Not necessarily in that order. The second digit is half the fourth, so two is half of four. The fifth digit is the sum of the first and fourth, so one and four. It's one, two, three, four, five. Come on, dude. Writing that out, that, like the fact that I even opened a notepad and started writing it, even though I didn't make it that far in that process. <sighs> Feel silly. Thanks for that. Yep, the code's just a simple rising set of consecutive numbers. Out of curiosity, how could you have known what the code was? Oh, it was written on this side of the door. And you just thought it would be a fun game to the test my my abilities? You know I'm always skipping out on school. You shouldn't be relying on any education to be my strong suit. All right, buddy, here's your dumb daisy. You can spontaneously combust yourself out of this mess now, please. I have mixed feelings about that escape. You're welcome. Oh, hey, would you mind following me for a while? Well, I would mind, but you're smart, so I'm sure there's a significant purpose to having me follow you. Great, glad you agree, but I'm afraid you can't enter any rooms with a smoke detector. Ah, there is where that whole payoff finally is. I'll be content as long as I get to burn something. Man, is he just constantly emanating smoke? Like, is his scalp burning and scalding and ugh, that sounds kind of terrifying actually. It's quite horrible. Judging from the, the okay, you can't, can't interact with the dolls any further. I need to take you to where pigs fly and I can burn down your little door for you there. Thanks so much, Zach. That was literally all I needed. You're, you're no longer necessary. <laughs> wow. Way to, way to say thanks. Rude. Now we can put some feathers in the cap for maximum fancification. Just gotta make sure things are looking extra gorge before we, we hand that off to Big Toe. I like, I like that Zack like follows me around. It kind of makes me wish that like all the characters were available and all had something to contribute. I've had an idea for my own fan game for a long time. I mapped it out years ago and that was a, a core mechanic of it. Feather in the hat. Oh. Oh. Yup. Mm-hmm. Good stuff. Why did you have that? I don't think we ever talked about you having that. Good day, sir. Thank you again for the lovely hat. I will be reminded of your kind gesture every time I vigorously do the tango. This conversation just ended. I hope you find your own way out. <laughs> Cause I, I'm apparently not really contributing. I'm, uh, I'm just moving on. You, everyone else took care of themselves. I guess messy. I kind of did it for them. The goat stuck as well. He just doesn't seem to mind. Hook that up, and I feel like you did know the key code. Snaws. What? I'm pretty sure the password is snaws. But it can't be snaws, it's only numbers. Really? I guess this paper I found was useless. I'm not joking though. Here, maybe it means something to you. 2045? But would it only be... 
four digits? That doesn't seem right. Like, that's that's kind of going back to the blobbles. Two, zero, four, five. Nothing. What am I missing here? Smiley, we need help. We're too dumb. What was... Oh, I'm missing a button. I can't enter the threes. Huh, and I still don't have a solution to that, even. Where was Diz being kept? Can we can we catch up with him and, and do something there? I'm not escaping the way Messi did. He could get flushed because he's an aquatic dinosaur. Rapidly tumbling through miles and miles of water-filled pipes wouldn't be good for my health. Well, I'm glad you at least considered it. That we weren't just immediately writing that off. Sorry, you're an intruder! Yeah, yeah, I know your whole thing. Coleslaw and the like. I'll have the last laugh, I'm sure. The storage room? Is there anything that I I missed here? It really does seem to be like a, a nothing room. What about back in my own room? I don't think there's anything to miss out here either. Oh, the flusher. Lop flushered potty. It's probably a term you expected to hear today. <laughs> like, I need the hairspray before I can do anything with the snowman. But I need to save Smiley and I need a button to do that. So I must need to be able to figure out snaws. This room looks familiar? Familiar how? Does it look a lot like your jail room? A little, but what I really meant is it looks a lot like a school restroom. <laughs> Yep, that makes me feel so much better. I was kind of curious if that urinal was a, a reused asset from a previous game. Now it, it really might be. I don't know if I, I did this like dialogue tree earlier. How are you? Not terrible. Could be better. Alrighty then. <laughs> Have you decided on any potential future careers? I'd like to do something for the world, but I don't think I'd be great with medicine. Maybe you could be a psychiatrist? Wow, <laughs> Ruffle! <laughs> Seriously though, I got nothing. <laughs> what did you say your door's code was? I saw a kangaroo slay a dragon on the way here. I saw a rainbow rhinoceros using butterflies to take a vacation to the sun. I saw a sentient daffodil that was allergic to itself and it used its molten muscles to cook. I saw Saturn's ring up close, and it's really an everlasting spiral staircase that spits up stardust. I saw a kumquat giving birth to a speeding ticket shaped like a constipated gopher. Shoot. I'm never gonna win this game. <laughs> Is it just trying to, like, out-weird one another? <laughs> it's kind of a fun game, and like a good experiment in, in improv. The dial pad, I could be wrong, but it looks like it says snoz. <sighs> I guess it could be 5402, maybe, but I'd still be missing, I'm still missing a digit. It's not ripped in a way where you're missing a, di a digit, I just, I just saw it, it just like clicked, it registered, 51702. Ah, that should have uh, clicked a lot sooner. There you go, Fred. Cool, now what? Zack is waiting for us on the bottom floor of the building. When did he go there? He was standing right there. Awesome, so how do we get there? Just go out the door and there will be an elevator in plain sight. Down I go then. I'll tell you if I can't find it. Did Zack leave? Well, he's still chilling. He's still just chilling for the time being, I guess. Can I, can I, like, yank anything? Another wash your hand sign? I don't see why our cells have these signs. None of the sinks have any soap. They just want to be able to, like, say they were promoting hygiene if anyone ever comes and, and does, like, an assessment, an evalu uh, evaluation. Uh, there's a specific word I want, like an audit. Like an audit of cleanliness. All right, well, I got Fred out, but that d did not get me a button. And then for some reason the dial pad's just gone. I would really have liked to have used that. The the button off of it for helping Smiley would be useful. Can you just can you just hook me up? Can you just pass it through that slot there? I can't comprehend. Just just hand hand it over, please. I I kind of need it. Could I have your hairspray? Are you planning on growing hair? Oh uh, no, I I like being bald. I I just think the hairspray would help us escape. If you could hand it to me through the slot in the cell door, that would be great. 
<laughs> Interesting. Here you go. Thanks. Guess I could have just done that the whole time. I just not quite the the order of operations I was expecting. You are in the same floor as Big Toe, so the negotiable snowman is down here. Hey, buddy, I got you some hair. Ooh. Oh, he's so excited and a little like tubby. Ah, kind of was expecting just out the head. There was like a tennis racket and a chainsaw. I didn't, I didn't quite see everything that flew through there. Uh, thanks, buddy. Hi. Are you enjoying having hair? Hair is the single greatest thing that's ever happened to the universe. I'll, I'll take that as a yes. I'm, I'm glad you're having such a, a great time. Happy to help. And now, obviously, the, the dice in the slot, obviously. I'm curious if he's going to flip it over to the three side. It wouldn't matter, but he did it anyways, which is kind of funny. And it was 51333. Nice. I remembered like an hour later. Thanks. What's next? I think it would be a good idea to get everyone to gather at the lowest point of this building. Gotcha. I'll be right down. I'm not entirely sure what the logic behind that is, but at the same time, it makes complete and total sense. So down we go. That's... I, I have seen no reason to argue with it. Smiley, where did you learn to smile so much? I think I was in the library? Statement does not compute. M tried not to make fun of her. Must maintain character arc of not being mean to everyone. <laughs> I'm guessing you found the elevator? No, sure didn't. Figures. And we can't even talk to Zach because he's just hanging in my pocket or whatever. Totally the wrong room. Uh, elevator. Hmm. Right, do I need to show them that I'm here with friends or whatever? No, 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 there, there we go. My friends seem to all have accidentally stumbled out of their heavily secured confinement cells. We were hoping to have a picnic in the room behind you. Care to let us in? Wait, all of you escaped? Seriously? There were friends I cannot comprehend. I wish you all a happy new year. Run, psionic frenzy. Berserker. <laughs> well, you just you just carry on with that. Enjoy, have fun. Uh, we'll just go go back to our cells, pretend like nothing happened, and and just kind of let it go. And I think I just have to like it's just a timing thing. Is that is that all it is? There you go. <laughs> just takes a few quick attempts there to get that right. It's a, a simpler puzzle than I was anticipating it being. Really, away we go. Game saved. It was the first save in the whole thing, I think. It took a ways into the game for that to happen. Diz, maybe finally? Wow, there's a lot of text all of a sudden all at once in a bunch of different places there. I like that the newer Riddle School games almost have like a boss room. Call it a long shot, but I think this machine might be reading Diz's mind. It looks like it's retrieving data regarding vision kind of drastic method to gain information about a dead project. Unless... Vision was a scheme concocted by the psychotic alien dictator Viz. He started this project to essentially destroy the whole universe. Planet Earth would have been destroyed had I not found a way to stop the maniac. What? Riddle School 5 and Riddle Transfer are an eventful, like, 24 hours. Viz got a taste of his own poison, and the project Vision died with him. Less. I wonder if the researchers at Zone 5.1 realize this. Or maybe they know all too well. No matter, I came here to free Diz. And then, this journey through injustice will all be a pleasant memory. Nice swirly jig. That kind of looks like a whirlpool in a polluted bay. It doesn't appear that I can do anything with this yet. The communicator device slots in there, of course. Uh, a little brain monitor. The machine is apparently a mind-reading device. I'd hate to be inside one of these. My brain's baffled enough as it is with technology ta without technology tapping into it. I mean, you kind of already were in one. It looks like the information is being collected about vision. And more data. A picture of the vision ship we rode in before we ended up here. Vision ended with Viz when Viz was defeated. So why are there plans here for the dead program? 
whatever is in this tube, it's probably not a good idea to swim in it. And this liquid is too bright blue to be water. Maybe it's an energy drink? Some, some wet aid, perhaps? Plop that in there. Easy, easy bit of a puzzle to solve. Freeing Diz probably wouldn't be so hard if there wasn't this wall of protective lasers. Yes, the part that is blocking him from being accessed is the tough part. Yes, I agree. This is just a, a simple matter of swinging around some things. It's a, like one of the simpler of the puzzles, really. It's actually so simple that it borders on like, I don't know, therapeutic or something. It's just kind of like nice, relaxing, simple, pretty easy to, to move your way through. And uh, there, locked it in. That one's it's not bad, hey? Another contraption. Seven minus zero equals, oh wait, is this like mastermind kind of? I mean, seven, six, zero? But I don't really understand how to enter that into this contraption. Oh, it's a giant digital pad. Mm, but the numbers need to be blue. Going with like the keeping consistency to the design there. Seven, and it's a little bit of a lengthy process, but we'll, we'll get through it. And it even shows us how a six looks in this thing using the, the other the other data components and zero. Another relatively simple one. It's mostly just a color puzzle more than anything. I'll just light them all up. Simple as can be. Just click them around random willy-nilly. And sooner or later you get it right. I honestly didn't think that would work as quickly as it did. Oh, this one also, I kind of feel like I remember having, like, a, a simple solution. But I, I don't quite remember how to do it. Did I just flip all of them? I can't remember if it started as blue or green. That's promising, but all of a sudden, <laughs> ruined? Hmm. Getting closer for sure. <laughs> uh, and now we're quite far off. Oh, dang. Okay. Kind of, kind of got a feel for that one. It was a little easier than the that type of puzzle in the previous game. But even then, that was still mostly just random clicking. I got you out of there. That's a fun little quick snappy series of puzzles. Nothing too complex right at the end there. Diz, buddy, old pal. Friend of the last, like, six hours? <laughs> it looks like everyone is here and accounted for. And everything at that. I still have the remote to the ship. How marvelous, hero. Lead the way. Our freedom awaits us. I'm glad to have helped. Let's all cruise on out of here, bud. Re-entering that establishment would indubitably serve as counterproductive. Oh, right, yes, of course. I was, I was just trying to, like, leave. Just, just bailing on out of here. Uh, right, we just need to go to the, the air hangar, airship hangar, which... Sorry everyone, sorry for wasting your time. I, I should probably have a better understanding of the layout of this place here. It's just, uh, it's, it's taken me a little while to figure it out. I'm getting turned around pretty easily. Diz, wait up! I'm sorry, but there is no time! You will have to find another exit. You're not gonna bail on us, are you? You're gonna, you're doing this so that you can rescue us, correct? Like, long term? That's your plan? You couldn't have waited one more second for us to all get in there with you? Rude. Rude. I had no choice but to go here, actually. Down into the sewers. Which, at one point, when John first started this, he had it in his mind that it was going to be... Look at those guys. They're not bald. For some reason, I thought they were bald as well. But he had, like, a five-part st story arc for what Riddle Transfer would eventually become. And the first one started in the sewer. He, like, drew the first room of it and everything and had the, uh, a general idea mapped out. He kind of lost interest in a way. Like, it felt repetitive. The passion just wasn't there. I talk about it a lot in that flashlight episode of kind of how... The series went from almost ending a few times to picking back up to, like, losing that motivation to finally seeing it through in the end. 
which is just like such a wild journey and so awesome that he he had that commitment to to see it through is more than any any of us could have asked for really but yeah that's kind of where, where the sewer thing would have led uh it's in that sense like one of the most open-ended of the games which is kind of uh interesting and partially why people were so distraught that for years there wasn't a follow-up. Thought process behind it, frequently asked questions, and lovely reviews. What are some frequently asked questions? When is Riddle School 6 coming out? Never. Why don't you make it? I like that 5 ended the series. It was meant to tie the other parts together. Which it did, really effectively. Can I make 6? Surprisingly, quite a few different people have asked this. I've told them, sure. And the only game sub entitled Riddle School 6 that I've seen submitted to Newgrounds was Blammed. That made me laugh because I'm pretty sure it was a spam submission. Make another Riddle School series. This isn't a question. How do you combine items? What was the point? Phil just died. Ah, there's a, there's a lot of things here that we can go through. What is your personal favorite? Riddle School 5. Ah, at one point he kind of said that 4 was his favorite, but I guess... Realistically, it's like it was his favorite in the sense that it was probably cathartic to put that out there, but it wasn't actually his favorite. There is a, a lot, a lot of things here. Maybe I, <laughs> I would read through all of it if these videos weren't already excessively long. And I know that you guys can go and read this for yourself. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll save all this. Me narrating it, probably not necessary. Whew. My voice needs a rest anyways. Thank you guys all so much for watching. We'll be back to round out the series Riddle Transfer 2. I'll see you again.